Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use leaf overlays in Photoshop. Leaf overlays are a great way to create a foreground for your image. A mistake I often see is that people will put together a composite and they make their subject the foreground rather than putting the subject in the middle. In terms of depth, you want a foreground, your subject, and then a background. And leaf overlays are a really easy solution to solve this problem by putting something in the foreground and then pushing your subject into the middle of your image. I'm gonna show you really quickly how to do that realistically in Photoshop. And if you wanna follow along, I have included the overlays and the image that I use in this tutorial in a link in the description of this video. So go ahead, download that, and then let's get started. All right, let's go to File, Open. I'm gonna open this Aleph Vinicus file that I got from Unsplash. And the first thing I wanna do is just separate them from the background. To do that, I'm gonna select one of my selection tools, click on Select Subject, and if I hit Q, I can see the quick mask. That looks pretty good, um, certainly good enough for what I need it. So I'm just gonna do Command J put that on its own layer, we can call this subject. And then I'm gonna select my background, open my libraries, and I have maple leaves here, which is part of my foreground elements collection. And I have them broken down into individual leaves and overlays. And I'll include a link to a separate tutorial on how to put your overlays into Photoshop so that you have access to them in your libraries. It's really easy to do with Bridge. Okay, so from these overlays, I'm just gonna grab mm, this one here. And I'm gonna pull that in, bring it to size. And this is gonna be our kind of a layer that is behind them, but not too far behind them. So in order to make this work in this scene, obviously I need to adjust the colors. You can see that here we have very strong yellow red light whereas these have a very neutral light on them. And you can especially see that in the highlight here. This highlight has almost a blue quality compared to the highlights on their skin and the shirt. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to Image Adjustments Curves. And first I'm just gonna bring down the contrast a bit because we have pretty strong contrast in this image. Then I'm gonna to go to my blues, bring down the blues quite a bit to get that yellow into the highlights. And then finally just bring up the red to get more of the red of this image into there. So that looks really nice. Next, I wanna add a little bit of blur. So this is a very shallow depth of field image. You can see by how blurred out the background is. So even if this is maybe, let's say a foot behind them, it's gonna have a little bit of blur. So let's go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and let's make it eight. So you can still see what they are. They're just a tiny bit blurry, a tiny bit out of focus. All right, next I'm gonna select my subject because I want the next layer to go on top of them. And then from here, I'm just gonna grab one of these medium density ones, so these three here. And there's, in my large collection, I have about 50 of each, but I've just pulled in a few here so you can see. Um, so this one, I'm gonna pull in, and this will be a layer that's about a foot in front of them. So let's put it about here. And I want elements of the leaves to interact both with my image and with the background. So here, like where you have a leaf crossover, it just sells the illusion that this was all taken with the same camera or in the same photo. So I'm looking at this clump here, kind of seeing where I wanna place that. Kind of like it somewhere around here. I also kind of like these leaves falling. So I think this is a nice place for it. Now, because I have all these smart filters already built, I'm gonna hold down Option, Command, and just drag these smart filters onto here. That's gonna copy them. Immediately you can see these integrate much better. Um, but because these are closer to us, I want them to have slightly less blur. And to do that, all we have to do is double click on our Gaussian blur here and just bring that down. Because this is a smart object, all our filters are um, adjustable after the fact.
So something like that I think looks pretty nice. And then finally, I wanna have a few uh, really foreground leaves, and that's where these individual leaves come in handy. So here, I'm just gonna grab one that I think looks interesting. Let's do this one here. So I'm gonna pull that in, kinda of put it in the foreground here, something like this. Um, I'm gonna hold down Option Command, copy these smart filters, and here I really want to blur this because this is very close to our camera. So let's go back to our Gaussian Blur. Let's start bringing that up. I almost want it unidentifiable. So something like that. Okay, and then I could copy this and maybe make one more here. And this one will pretend is even closer to the camera. Maybe flip it horizontal so it doesn't look exactly the same. Make it even bigger something like this. Um, actually, I'm gonna make this one, the one that's closer to camera. So this one will have even even bigger blur, something like this. And then maybe this one, I'll tone down the blur just a little bit. And that's kind of how you're visually communicating where these are in terms of depth. So the closer they are to camera, or the closer they are to the focus plane, the more in focus they are, and the farther away, whether going backwards or forwards, the more blurry they are. So if I wanted this to be like they're in a rain of maple leaves, I would take one of these higher density and put it in the very background. So now you have like these small leaves in the background. Maybe put it somewhere here, copy those same effects, and for this one, I would blur it even more because it's so far away from camera. It's really just an impression in the background like that. Um, so it's just adding a little bit of orange highlights into that background where they might be falling. Okay, one last thing is I do see here that we have a little bit of an extra leaf there. Um, to get rid of that, all I have to do is add a mask here and just paint it out. And also if there's a, any leaves that I don't want in front of my characters, I can easily paint those out. So if I wanted to get rid of one of these leaves, maybe this one on his collar, I would just select that layer, uh, make sure it has a mask, and then just paint that one out. Uh, something like that. All right, and then the last thing I want to do is this original photo has quite a bit of grain to it, and obviously the elements that we've had it added have no grain. So you get this um, disparity here in terms of the grain of the image that immediately tells you this was not taken in camera. So to finish selling our illusion here, I want to make this look like it was all taken in camera. So I'm going to add a new layer here. We can call this layer noise. And I'm going to fill it with 50% gray. So to do that, just put this on 50, make sure these two are on zero and then option delete to fill or alt backspace on a PC. I'm gonna put this on overlay. You'll notice now with overlay, this is doing nothing. So now what we're gonna do is go to filter, noise, add noise, and 50 is fine. I want it to be Gaussian monochromatic. Um, you can see here it's way too strong. So I'm gonna to go to filter, blur, just add a simple blur and then do it again maybe one more time. So three little blurs there. And then I can just take the opacity down on this until it's starting to look good. So I would say somewhere around 40%. And there you go. Now our leaves have grain on them and this all looks like it was taken in camera. And now we have our leaves. And here you can see the before and the after. And that just puts them in an environment. It puts our subject in an environment. Um, it kind of feels like you're peeking into what's happening as opposed to being a uh, intentional spectator. So there you have it. That's how you add leaf overlays in Photoshop. Now these leaf overlays that I showed you in this tutorial are part of my foreground elements bundle. I have included a link to that in the description of this video. It includes green leaves, maple leaves, autumn leaves, as well as many other overlay elements that you can use to create that depth in your composites and images. 
All right, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, share this video, leave a comment. I do try to read them all. And here's some other videos that you can check out. And I'll see you next time.